if you could take the case study out of your folders, please. And this is going to be working in groups, and I think it might as well uh, be the groups of three that you're in on each table. Um, so this is a case study about setting codex standards and it's about uh, the standard for smoked fish. It's based on a real-life situation uh, because in the last uh, five years the Codex Elementaris Committee on Fish and Fishery Products was considering a new codex standard for the level of PAH, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons in smoked fish. And uh, they received a proposal and it was necessary to consider uh, within the frame of the codex process uh, how to address this issue in terms of the standard. So <clears throat> what we've given you in the case study is some of the background information regarding the uh, toxicity of these materials. The proposal from Norway to the committee uh, and some information regarding the levels of PAHs in typical artisanally produced smoked fish from a small scale uh, fish processing activity. And what I'd like you to imagine that in your little groups of three, you're a working group in a, uh, which has been asked by the, your National Codex Committee to comment on these proposals and recommend what your national position should be. Okay. Uh, can I ask, do any of your, you in your fishery sector, do you have smoked fish produced at all? For local consumption, yeah? Dried fish, but not smoked. Okay, but you have some, some smoked fish in, in Dominica. Yeah, okay. You're experimenting with it? Well, we aren't distinguishing at this stage. This would be a codex standard and Imagine that potentially, if you're producing it, maybe at some stage in the future, one of your producers may wish to export. export. Yeah. Now, we've given you some uh, levels of uh, PAHs in smoked fish, which I took from a, a case in Ghana. So you can imagine that these are typical of the sector which you, are, uh, which you have in your country. Okay. So you have to try and work out what, uh, what would be the appropriate response to make uh, to this proposal. Okay, so if you can work in groups of three on your tables, then after half an hour, 40 minutes or so, once you've worked out the response, then I will just ask one person from each group. You don't, won't need to get up or come to the front, but I will just ask one person from each group to... Uh, give us your uh, recommendations. Just to say there have been many articles published in the academic press about the carcinogis carcinogenicity of these polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So we know that they are carcinogenic, we know that they are uh, teratogenetic. Uh, they can also impact on the development of the fetus. So they are quite dangerous compounds. <coughs> so each group will have to decide who will be the spokesperson. And we're going to give you a maximum of, maximum of two minutes on each of the three tasks. So a very brief, concise 
presentation to prepare, please. Okay, so let's, can we start with this group, group one, or group, the one at the back, okay, all right, okay, you start, you can kick off, so, uh, let's hear your proposals. For the first task, what are the research studies that you would seek to launch? because of course here we don't have all the information we need about this particular country but uh, you may want to get some more information so what are the questions you would ask? Okay, yes. Um, first of all you have to realize that um, this is something that will normally take us a few days to do and we only, have, we only had a few minutes to do it, right? <laughs> okay. Now um, first, um, determine the level of um, PAA for small fishery products within, um, within your country. Within, within, within our country. Yep. Okay. Uh, determine if the water temperature and also the um, climatic climatic condition because different um, species, right? The, the levels the levels of um, chemical composition in fish species varies because of the region. Okay. So determine if uh, water temperature and other factors impact the toxicity of PAH. Within, within the particular species that you're going to use. Uh, identify countries with um, tropical climate who has already developed standards of PAH. So identify the short-term standards and long-term standards of these countries who already um, developed their research. Right? So that's where we got for our question. That's task one. Right? Okay. Task two. Any questions? 
questions on that? Any observations? Right. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay, so shall we take uh, this group now, please? Yeah, actually, we in terms of describing uh, the research study that we have done to help us to decide uh, multiple country positions, um, we look for the product that might be good if you can do a lot of literature review on, on this subject or topic. And then we look at a lot of risk assessment um, in terms of, um, we'll also look at matter of consumption. Um, comparing uh, those effect, those response effect on in terms of sh uh, on short term or short time exposure, um, because we look at summary that was listed in here in terms of toxicity and other considerations. Though they were um, done in laboratory species, um, if we, if we want to go down in terms of our national laboratory testing, we thought that we could probably um, understand the fact that sometimes there can be excess issues as we just go and we are very busy in these species of laboratory animals. We even thought about, um, we can probably consider um, biosy or using like cells, human cells on chips um, to test to test their toxicity. Um, when we think of the second task in terms of preparing uh, option for position of opaque exposure, we would then um, look at what is the acceptable level, and in this case, we look at what is established by the EU regulation in terms of the um, And then we support the draft standard by codex that is actually guidance at, at the national level. Um, in terms of recommendations, we look at those that will have that won't have any socioeconomic impact. That you won't want to put for some company like the other jobs and other things. So we look at things like the process technology, um, perhaps the fish species, um, the type of wood material or the chemicals we use um, in terms of burning, because we know how we the pH actually forms. Yeah, because it's 
Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Okay, so we go to the group behind, please. Stella.
in principle, not endorse the proposal, but seek time to get more information or even technical assistance from other developed countries um, for which this, um, is, this is a problem before we can, we can, um, we can um, endorse the proposal. So we might even see information from the codex secretariat or, or, or other um, people who are willing to assist me <coughs> because we do not have the capacity. Um, another option, another option would be, sorry, <coughs> another option would be, if possible, to use um, certain areas or, or communities where this product is being consumed as, as a study area. And um, we will use that to go into number three to make recommendation for, our, um, <coughs> for the Food Safety um, Authority that use this information to, to analyze the uh, status of the community area where the most frequent illnesses are they in any way or form associated with thank you. Are they in any way or form associated with the effects of PAH? In the meantime, by still being proactive, we will look at ways with the um, Food Safety Authority to look at um, additional measures that can be done to enhance the correct, me the correct methods which um, people are using and um, look at new technologies or even ways in which of modifying what is currently being used um, in the least expensive way to enhance the effects of um, PAH. I think we probably would also want to mention too is that the impact that this proposal that Norway is bringing, what impact would it have on the countries who are not yet able to meet that limit? Because if you will observe, Ghana, who are exporting products to the EU, had their commodities uh, rejected or put on alert. And if you move this proposal, which is an EU proposal, an EU standard, and take it to a codex standard, you will now broaden the effect that it will have. So you're moving out from one region and you're taking it to codex, which is global. So if a country again, whose fish has been rejected by the EU, and Norway, which is a large producer of fish, or one of the large producers of fish, they will then have some significant control of the market. And countries like Ghana, which depend heavily on these things, you can impact the economy negatively. And that is what you have to concern yourself about because it is a human factor. Now that it's taken into consideration that you're moving up from region or bringing it to work, and it can cause many people's issues to pass.
tailoring the liquor regulation to reflect standards that are already out there for adapted, for example, Quebec and the tariffs and we're not in terms of the limits um, and standards, tailoring the regulation to, re to reference standards that we think would be better as well because you don't want to put the limit in the regulation because you don't want to change it or revisit it from time to time to keep it in a standard. The standard of course it's easier to amend and once the regulation reflects that standard able to um, you know, revisit it from time to time. So I think uh, that is our contribution. Okay. Very good. Okay, thank you all very much for that. Uh, I think you can give yourselves a round of applause and that's what we do. I think between you all you've covered almost all of the major points uh, which I, I wanted to, to come out of, of this. Now, it's clear you didn't have enough information to make a definitive uh, response. However, I think almost all of you got that you actually need to know the level of these substances in the products which are produced in your own country. So that would be the first thing that you'd have to do, is try to determine by taking samples and analyze them. So you can, you can make some assessment. Do you comply with these proposals or not? And that's a really, really important uh, question to, to be able to answer because it's quite clear from all of the, the research which has been done and the publications and the toxicity studies that these things are highly toxic. More or less, some are less toxic, some are more toxic. Uh, there is quite a range of different toxicity levels depending on the compound, but nevertheless, generally we can say that these things are uh, a risk to, to health. And certainly this was, this was quoted, this is the risk assessment that the EU did uh, to actually look at specific links between uh, different levels and the likelihood of uh, toxicity in, in the human beings and the consumers and the EU concluded and I think this is more or less where we got to uh, that many of them are toxic that uh, because of the nature of these compounds there is no there is no threshold level below which you can say things like this are safe it's like smoking cigarettes is that it, and that's the same carcinogen as when you're smoking <laughs> cigarettes um, in theory, one molecule of a PAH alters the likelihood of you developing a, a cancer. So the more you have, the higher the likelihood. So there is no threshold level, and that's just the nature of these kinds of risks. So you can't say for sure below a certain level is 100% safe. It's a question of risk management, as we said uh, at the beginning. And so the recommendation within the EU was uh, from the European Food Safety Authority, which gives the scientific advice, was that these things should be set as low as possible, as low as reasonably achievable. And this is actually a, an important principle. We call it ALARA, as low as reasonably achievable. So you put the limit as low as you possibly can get uh, with your existing technology and, and, and so on. Uh, so that was uh, where, where we got to with the EU. Uh, but in this case, once you have established what are the levels in the products which you are producing, uh, there's one other very important piece of information which you need to know, which is how much are people eating? Because it's the total amount you eat in your diet which is important here. So did anybody mention consumption surveys? Consumption. You did, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Well done for that. You mentioned consumption patterns because that's, that's a really important thing. And also, the additional complication is it's not just fish. Because these compounds might come from other products as well, from other sources. If you're eating smoked meats, uh, as many people do in other countries, you have to look at the overall 
consumption of these compounds from different sources. So you, you have to get into what people are eating and understand the amount of different foods, the levels of PAHs in the different foods, and then you can come to what we call an exposure assessment. You can work out how much your average person is exposed to these compounds. And that's your average person. Yes, Free. Uh, before you go on, with all of this, right, my concern now is um, <clears throat> what level, or identifying what level you would consider as um, being carcinogenic, you know? Well, there is, is, there, is there a particular level because, okay, it's said to go as low as possible. Yeah. Um, in, looking, in looking at this, in looking at this, Norway's um, suggestion is what? Um, 5.4. 5 yeah, right? going, going but back we to see, 2. We see, we see Ghana going like 6.2, other areas okay. see, um, 30, 35. Sure, but what is reasonably achievable is determined right. by your circumstances. This is Yeah. It's determined by your circumstances. What, what will your technology deliver to you? Okay? And, and I think this is, the, this is the important point because here, you see, we have levels of benzopyrene 5 going down to 2. It's now, now 2 micrograms per kilogram. That's not very much. Uh, but European technologies can achieve that. So they, that's why the EU has put that level, because that is what they think can reasonably be achieved with modern smoking techniques and, and so on. But it's clear that some countries actually have considerably higher levels than that. So in this case, this is our evidence. You know, remember the li limit was two. We have six here, 35 here, 37. Uh, 33, 45, 61. So if you take these as typical levels in that production environment, you can work out that there is a significantly higher exposure of, uh, of consumers to, to these compounds. Uh, so, yeah, we say 50 grams per capita day, for example, and that has implications for public health. So in, in, in that case, if we say we can do a little calculation, back of a, uh, an envelope calculation, and work out that your average exposure based on this data consumption and levels. In this case, this West African case, it's about 28 nanograms per kilogram of body weight per day based on this exposure, this average level of benzpyrene, which we took from the rapid alert. Uh, we know what the estimated annual consumption is, and we can work out that from fish alone, this is before we count any other, it's about 730 micrograms per person per year which gives us that much per day. Compared to an EU level, which is set out in their uh, risk assessment of three to four. So you can, you can come to a conclusion that your exposure is you know, more or less. Uh, and this is how you can relate other people's risk assessments well, we to your own situation. Yeah, you don't have to go through the whole risk assessment, but as long as you've got that consumption data, and you know the levels in your product, you can start to say something about exposure. So uh, they are the two key pieces of information. What are the levels in the product? What's the exposure? And then, of course, you have the task two, setting the actual standard. Well, what's quite interesting is, uh, can I just, Check. Did anybody suggest a specific level or a specific limit? No. 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 Okay. Would, but would you all recommend having a limit in your own countries? Yeah. You would. Yeah. You would. Okay. Well, 
this is what I found most interesting was that um, this is actually what the codex standard says. This is actually what was decided to write in the standard. They decided to reject the proposal for a specific limit and they just wrote in the standard because of the pressure from developing countries which have smoked fish. Smoking of fish should be done in a manner that minimizes the formation of the PAH. And that's what the codex standard says. Okay? Question. Um, yeah. Methods smoking can actually mitigate against the risk. It does, like, yes. Cold smoking and cold Yes, it does. Which is which is the last part of the uh, the test. Uh, but I, I think the point you made was very appropriate. If a limit were to be put in this, it's not just product which goes, say, from Ghana to Norway or to the EU, which is affected, its next door neighbor could equally reject fish on the basis of this standard, justifiably, because that's in codex. So it would have tremendous impacts on regional trade. And this is why developing countries are very cautious about what is written into uh, codex standards to make sure it's not just an importation of you know, Western standards where the technologies and uh, everything is much more developed. Um, they do take care to make sure that uh, they don't write these uh, too difficult uh, standards which are too difficult to comply with. Uh, so yeah, this is all they wrote about smoked fish and PAH. Um, should be done in a manner that minimizes the formation and uh, they refer to a code of practice and that is essentially saying try to use smoking technologies which do not put too much smoke into the fish and this in effect is the moves on to the last part of the uh, the exercise, what, what kind of uh, actions could you do? Well, you could do more risk assessment work, because as has been pointed out, maybe there are certain aspects of season, or fat content, or the nature of the product in your region, which more or less uh, determines the amount of absorption of these PAHs from smoke into the fish. So that could be one, one thing you could look at, kind of fish, climate, uh, and so on, uh, to try and understand that. So more studies in that area. Uh, advice to customers, to consumers. You were quite right to say, let's limit by giving advice. You don't always have to pass a regulation. You can pass advice and have a campaign, put notices in, uh, in the press and uh, so on. <coughs> Perfectly acceptable in this case with this particular hazard to restrict consumption by uh, pregnant women, young people, infants. Uh, I questioned your, uh, your old people because the thing is if with carcinogens it's consumption over a long time that's one of the quantity. Yeah, exactly. So if you're, if you're going to die tomorrow, let's be honest, if you're going to die tomorrow, then, then eat what the hell you want. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but giving advice to consumers, properly scientifically formulated advice. Um, and look at alternative technologies. You're quite right that you can find ways to smoke your fish which may uh, reduce the level of PAHs. And uh, we find that traditional smoking methods do result in very high levels. So if you have a way of controlling your process, controlling the smoke density, the temperature, and things like this, then, then you can do that. And that could be, if you wanted to pass a regulation, it could be a regulation about the technology and the process 
rather than the uh, content in the product to say, well, you have to use a mechanical film or, or something like that. Uh, and of course, the problem with that, if you're going to say to people, well, you can't use your traditional technology, you have to use a new technology, is that you have to create some kind of incentives for them to do so. Do so. It's okay to put a regulation, but if you have a lot of people who are dependent on that process, and dependent on that product, um, they may not have the resources to be able to uh, invest in new technology. So you would have to come up with a policy framework to uh, support them. And just to say that these are decisions which can't really be made exclusively by a food safety body, they can't be made exclusively by a fisheries or a public health body. They involve a whole set of cross-cutting activities across fisheries, in our case, or the sectoral ministry or department involved, uh, environment, uh, food safety and public health, and trade. So these are areas where you need to have a degree of integration. So when it's a Codex Committee, a National Codex Committee, you need to have all of these various parties.